Lieutenant Miller? I'm Faith. Kate's sister? She never mentioned a sister. Yeah, well, we're not the mentioning kind. She told me to find you if things went bad. She's been arrested. And you wouldn't be the suspect seen fleeing from the crime scene, would you? Well now, it's difficult to recall with a gun in my face. I know what you are. You know it was a setup, right? I know Kate wouldn't be capable of something like this. But my captain's asking some difficult questions, and I can't even get in to see her. What do you know about something called Icarus? Why? It's mentioned on this. It was in Pope's hand. I think it's from his diary. You took evidence. Kate's the only family I have, Lieutenant. And Blue's in jail don't last long. She goes down for this? It's a death sentence. I won't stop you. I owe that much to Kate. But there are plenty of people who'll try. And I can't stop them either. You better learn how to run. Running is what I do best. International shipping near the Riding Park subway. Should be a sign on top of the building. It'll help guide you. Look, I saw Rope Burn wrestle once. Broke some poor bastard's arm, then headbutted the ref. So if this Rope Burn really is mixed up with Pope's murder and Kate's setup, then he sure won't be a talker. He'll be a fighter. Hey there, and welcome back to Mirror's Edge. My name is Pete, and this is Chapter Three of the Story Mode. Last time we had a chat with Jackknife, a former runner. And we talked about the killing of mayoral candidate Robert Pope. Jackknife then pointed us towards Pope's head of security, Travis Burfield, also known as Ropeburn. Now, if we trust Jackknife's information, Burfield might be involved in Pope's murder. So here we are, looking for a meeting with the guy. Burfield, a former wrestler and best known for his brutality, is supposed to have an office nearby. And judging by Merck's quick briefing in the opening sequence, we probably won't have a friendly chit-chat with him. Despite the implication of trouble along the way, the first few minutes of this chapter are pretty uneventful. So I'll guess I just do something out of the ordinary and uh, shut up for a moment. Nah, I'm just kidding. Let's go inside. Here we can wall run turn jump up the little walkway, then slide through the small hole in the fence, slide again, drop down, and land in front of a red sign that tells us there's a runner back nearby, number 10 of 30 to be exact. Now we are only one runner back shy of the ran out of fingers achievement. With two more bags hidden in this level, this is an achievement that we will unlock in a couple of minutes. Before we do that, however, we run through some sort of server room and then climb back into the air duct. And very slowly, step by step, around the corner, we make our way close and then come to a sudden stop right above Roper. I just do what I'm told, you know that? Yeah, well, I don't know what to do. I uh, facilitate things. And I got more folks watching me than just you. And they wanted us to wrap her up all night, those moves. Yeah, yeah, so it don't look good for you, little dad. Take that up with them. In a few days, it'll all be over. Today's front page will be tomorrow's kitty litter. Come on! That runner won't last long. None of them will, right? The precious Project Icarus will be fine. Five by five. Now don't get your panties in a bunch. Look, meet me at that new place on Reynolds Street tomorrow. 4 p.m., okay? Don't freak, they ain't finished building it yet. All quiet once you get above street level. See you there. And don't bring any of your friends. We good? Good. Anyways, I gotta get some chow. Brain like this don't hold up itself, you know. <laughs> Okay, so Ropeburn seems very involved, both with Kate's setup and with Project Icarus. Additionally, we also get the time and date of a meeting, which could lead us to the person on the other end of the phone. So, Ropeburn did know something, huh? Wonder who he's meeting with. Get back here and we'll find a way to make you an uninvited guest. 
Hey, look sharp. I'm getting Blue's heading for you. You must have triggered a silent alarm somewhere. Ass out now. So, equipped with a gun, we have police incoming. Don't worry though, we're not going to use the gun on them. Instead, it comes in handy for clearing the exit out of the building. So we wall run and vault over the balustrade and then go full speed. This getaway is a little bit more advanced and it's absolutely crucial not to throw away the pistol yet. As you hear, we are under extremely heavy fire and stopping is a luxury we cannot afford. Red door means exit and that means also we can get rid of the pistol. Stop, you ain't shaking them yet. However, we are definitely not in the clear yet. Combat with these guys should be avoided under all circumstances because A, they are extremely tough to take down and B, they are not alone. And they also have flashbangs. As usual, we somehow make it out alive by taking a long jump onto the other roof where we are somewhat safe from these heavily armored guys. However, we should still escape the line of fire and luckily there is a red door in front of us which gets us inside and into safety. Things are not going well too long though because the elevator in front of us is broken. So we do what any normal person would do and just jump into the elevator shaft and slide down. Shit, lost her. <sighs> and just a few moments later we are back outside again. Drake's got a hideout up ahead. Head for the cranes and I'll update you when you get closer. And just like that we unlock the and safe achievement, one of the trickier achievements to get in Mirror's Edge. Watch it, Dave. The blues have a chopper incoming. As a friendly reminder of the dangers outside, a helicopter shows up and we're on the run again. Since we already are an expert and the escape goes pretty fluid, let's take a couple of seconds to talk about the end safe achievement again. I said it's tricky to get this and it's not necessarily because the combination is hard, but because the places where you can actually perform it successfully are very limited in the game. When you search for the achievement, you'll most likely end up with results describing how to get it on the Playground 1 level outside of the story mode. So this also goes to show you that the achievement is available in the story mode, you just have to look hard enough. And just before we go into combat, you remember in the last video we took an approach that relied heavily on knockouts. This time we turn it around and go for the disarms. The first one with reaction time and the other with a little trick. A slide kick not only gets us out of the line of fire, it also stuns the opponent, which we can then use to go around him and disarm him from the back. For the last one though, we go back to the knockouts, just to keep the balance. That's the last of them, Faith. Now get going. <laughs> we climb up the pipe, up to the rooftop and then take a little detour. This is necessary to grab the second runner back, which gives us a total of 11. As a result, we unlock the ran out of fingers achievement. Now that we have covered this as well, we continue onwards, first through a red door and then into an elevator. And this time the thing also works. Inside the elevator we see some anti-runner propaganda, which shows us that the runners are now being discriminated against in public and also allows for the assumption that maybe runners are actually seen as a threat by the government. All the while we're slowly moving towards the rooftop. From there, we are supposed to get into a hideout that belongs to one of our runner colleagues. Outside, the first thing that surprises is the absence of a helicopter and constant machine gun fire. Meanwhile, the music in the background strongly suggests that this is not a permanent state of things. We do not use the small ramp but just jump across the rooftop without it. This makes the jump a little lower but also much faster. And we don't have to use the skill roll at the end which saves us additional time. Should be some cover ahead, some scaffolding. Try and lose some of the heat in there. The heat that Mercury is talking about is coming, as usual, from above in form of a helicopter. Therefore we quickly make our way into the scaffolding for some cover. First we drop to the lower level and then we wall run jump to get back up. Shitload of blues in the plaza, go higher and get yourself out of there. After reaching the other side we continue to go upwards and fast. 
A wall climb turn jump followed by a long wall run allows us to go around the corner and out of the helicopter's sight. With some breathing room we slide under the pallets and then yeah, kick this guy off the rooftop. As far as I'm aware this does not count towards our knockouts, but it also doesn't count as a kill. Chopper's got a call from its mom and plug it out. Not for long, I'll bet. Despite the fact that we just kicked someone off a building. Combat continues and we use a kick of the wall run to turn this guy around and then disarm him from the back. We throw away the gun and then turn the corner, where another guy waits for us and our reaction time powered disarm move. That makes 4 disarms this level, leading us much closer to the needed total of 15 for the related achievement. We are almost at the end of the level. The last thing that needs to be done is to climb up the crane. And yes, perform the suicidal act of jumping from one crane to the other. On top of the crane on the other side, we find the third and last runner back of the level. Did you just do what I think you did? God damn it, girl, I just spilled my Joe all over the keyboard. Hey, can you get a message to Miller? I need to see him again. Sure. With an excited Mercury in our ear, we then go through the last red door of the level and into safety. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Cheers. Click the video to watch the next part in the series right now. If you like what I'm doing, hit the subscribe button and show your support.